Hey everybody, I'm William with Adept Community Support Ecology, and here's another video that we wanted to make for a long time. And this video is going to be on bloody gloving, or what's probably more properly called chemical gloving. And it's where we use a, a big chemical proof glove, and we're going to slide another glove on cloth glove on top of that, and we're going to spray herbicide into the glove and saturate naughty plants that we don't want to have anymore. And this technique's really good for. Um, when you have oh, a nice prairie or a planting that you want to keep really safe and you don't want to just do a foliar spray of application and the plant doesn't uh, can't be pulled out of the ground. So things like Canada thistle or Phragmites, purple loosestrife. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is mixing the herbicide. So we have a generic glyphosate solution. And believe me, I would rather not use this filth, but um, you know, for, for right now in human history, it's the ecologically most appropriate thing. Um, we're gonna mix it in this spray bottle and up to this ridge right here is about 30 ounces. And we wanna have roughly two to 4% solution of active ingredient. Um, so we wanna put two ounces in this and then fill it up to 30 ounces with water. So the first thing we're gonna do is use our handy measuring cup and uh, that little mark right there is two ounces, so I'll fill it up to there. La -dee -da -dee -da. This is why I went to college to learn chemistry. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So, I have a nice little funnel so I don't spill this filth anywhere. Next important step is to um, <clears throat> use your water and fill it up uh, all the way. Actually, what we're going to do first, sorry, before we do that, is we're going to add a little bit of blue dye. This blue dye will let us know what plants we've uh, actually herbicided and what plants we still need to do. If you don't add the blue dye, Sometimes you're just going at random and when you're using herbicide, it really sucks to just do things at random in part because if you're just doing it at random, you could find yourself walking through an area that you just put all this stuff in and then you'll notice your clothes are wet and it feels really gross if your clothes are wet with a bunch of herbicide and I don't, I don't wish that upon any of you. So let's not let that happen. So I'm going to use my uh, trusty thermo flask from Costco. They did not pay for this <laughs> at all. Um, I paid for it actually because that's what they're good at making me pay because I think they because I think they're giving me a deal by having all that bulk items and really man I love those Velveeta cookies um, so we're gonna fill this we're gonna fill this up to um, that rim probably that bottle of herbicides in your way right there we didn't quite get there because I don't quite have enough water, but I'm not going to worry about that at this moment. Um, again, we're going for an active ingredient of about 3.5%. We'll gently place this in here. Making sure to keep everything clean. So now all the herbicides in there, I did take off my glove, which is probably poor performance, but I haven't touched any herbicide. So now if I want to take this glove off, what I do is just stick my finger under there and pull it out and it's been really clean. I haven't touched any herbicide, I feel safe. Um, and next I'm gonna put on the big rubber gloves and uh, the cloth glove and then I'll show you how to treat these naughty plants. So we have, these are the gloves I'm gonna put on my hands. They're gonna protect me from the herbicide and you only need one cloth glove um, to use and the funnest part about this, especially if you like fashion, is that you get to be a little little uh, fashion designer right here, and you take your, your most trusty pair, pair of fashion scissors, and you cut the fingers off. And this will allow this glove to slip right over the other glove. It makes it way more comfortable. I mean, this is not a very comfortable process. So anything you can do to add a little bit more comfort is great. So here, 
be hand model you like my fingernail polish. It's been on there a month, this stuff doesn't come off. Highly recommend making sure you have some acetone. Okay, there's one glove. And then we're gonna just kind of slide this other glove right over it. By slide, I mean hope that it goes in. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So now let's go to the next step. Hey, look at that. There's some Canada thistle right here. So this is Canada thistle. Mm, there's some more. We'll, we'll show you another one that has flowers, but this will develop little pink flowers right on top. But as you can see, um, there's lots of things that we really like around here. So most of the grasses that you see are bottle brush grass and Canada wild rye. Um, there's a lot of different sedges in here. This is the second year after seeding. So um, there's a lot of sensitive plants and they're just growing. So we really wanna make sure that we um, get on top of the weeds and take care of the weeds without damaging everything that's growing. And so this is when um, the chemical glove technique uh, really comes in handy. So, um, a couple other things. Things you might want to do include wear personal protective equipment. So you can have an apron um, that will keep herbicide off of your body. Long sleeves would be a good idea if you want to wear a mask. Um, I'm only showing this for um, just for the purposes of teaching. So I'm being a bad teacher is basically what's happening. Um, but we're not gonna do a whole big treatment right now. Um, we're just gonna do this example so that you can see how to do it. So herbicide, spray bottle, and see, I'll come up here so you can see it. So we just pump it in there. And, you know, I called it bloody glove. It was just a joke that we had. Um, at work, we, we joked about things that were just wrong. So all we're doing is saturating this cloth glove and herbicide. And now what we can do, now that we have a lot in here, is we just go toward um, the bottom of the plant over here. And we want to try to cover as many leaves as we can. So we just go at the bottom and go around the stem. You know, if there's other plants in the way, just try to get them out of the way and then we just wick up the plant. Kind of, this is a little bit of a pain in the ass because the leaves sometimes like to fall off. And we really don't want them to fall off. We want them to get all nice and herbicided. So you probably can't see the blue dye in here really well. But that's all you do. And then this plant will die. Uh, Canada thistle is most susceptible to this right when it starts flowering. So this time of year, uh, if you're in the upper Midwest, is the best time to get Canada thistle. Um, another plant that is treated uh, like this, and it's not quite the treatment time right now, um, you want to wait till it starts flowering as well, is Phragmites australis. And there's actually an example of it right over here. <clears throat> And I don't know if it just came in uh, with this. This looks like a Dawn Redwood. Um, <clears throat> this tree, the tree looks like a Dawn Redwood. But here's Phragmites, so same thing. You just spray in your glove. It's nice and wet. You grab it and you just stroke up the plant, trying to not kill, trying to not peel off too many leaves. There you go. Uh, any, any questions, uh, drop a comment, send us an email. Um, we'll help out in any way we can. All right, peace, you guys.